Our coverage of the race for governor in North Carolina continues. Right now, we want to bring in the current state treasurer, Dale Falwell, who is a Republican candidate for governor. So, treasurer, thank you so much for joining us. I think to go ahead and start us off here for voters, uh, why run for governor now? The root word of governor is to govern. Uh, it's actually a verb. Uh, even though North Carolina is number one in business, uh, for business activity and business outlook, there's still lots to be fixed at state government. No one calls their state government to book a cruise. They call it because they need help in getting their tax return, uh, crime and public safety, foster care, DMV, DOT, Board of Elections. And I'll be a governor who fully understands that the state line does not end in Charlotte or in Raleigh. You have viewers who live closer to Tallahassee, Florida than they do their own state capital. So being a governor for all the people and understanding the needs of Western North Carolina is something that's very important to me. You said uh, the government there in the state needs fixing. What is it that you want to fix once you get into office? I want to bring back a level of customer service, which is based on the political Republican Party that I joined nearly 50 years ago. It was based on conservatism, which means to save. And every one of your viewers is conservative in some way, shape, or form. They may cut that toothpaste in two to get that last drop out. They may take that little thin bar of soap and put it on top of the new bar of soap and keep using it. The fact is, is that my reputation is that I can govern and talk about conservatism without offending people. So it's a culture of conservatism, common sense, not so common, courtesy. Courtesy means answering your phones at state government. Humanity, humility, and ethics. Ethics is what you do not only when no one's watching, it's what you do when the powerful forces in Raleigh and Washington, D.C. and around the world want you to look the other way. My reputation is that I listen, I act, and I fix. That comes from my training as a motorcycle mechanic and a blue-collar worker, a garbage collector who had, had to take my showers at the end of every day. Uh, and that's the same level of fight and fix that I'll bring to the governor's office. And we, have so many, we have so many things that need to be uh, fixed, and I'm fully prepared to do that as the next governor of North Carolina. You talk about ethics, and there, there was something that I, I saw on, on Twitter that you had tweeted at your opponent, Mark Robinson, the lieutenant governor. You said that he is lawless, he denies the Holocaust, hates women, and continues to fleece the taxpayers. Uh, some pretty strong words. Well, it's not just me. It's folks like you who put a microphone in his face, and every time he says he was taken out of context. And then the local Raleigh affiliates ask him, what word would you like to change when you deny the Holocaust? He said none of them. As far as women, uh, people can look that up. Uh, he says that women talk too much, should not be in a position of leadership, and any woman who doesn't know her place in the home is with a man who doesn't know his. These are his words in his own book. And the most offensive one is, if you beat the bird dog hell out of your wife at the mall, is that still domestic violence? In terms of the fleecing, uh, look at his personal life. Look at his campaign finance. Look at the fact that he has been the most absent AWOL public official this century in North Carolina. His only job, according to the Constitution, is to preside over the Senate. He showed up for less than 10 percent of the proceedings last year. So fleecing the taxpayers, being driven around with a highway patrol escort, and that's why I come back to what I said a few moments ago, that ethics is what you do when no one's watching. And when you say these are very strong words, these are his words. And any time he will not be challenged about these words, and that's why he not only will not show up for his current job, that he's being paid for by the taxpayers, but he will not show up for a job interview to address these important issues that people deserve to know the answers to. So why do you think he's been endorsed by the former president, Donald Trump? I have no idea. Uh, I did not ask nor uh, seek Donald Trump's endorsement. When I heard that, and by the way, if you go back to the transcripts, he talks about him uh, giving a great speech, but he can't remember what it was about or where it was. 
and then he sort of compared him to Martin Luther King. You know, just a few weeks ago, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson thought that all the anything that positive that happened from the civil rights movement, I mean, I, don't, I forget how he even characterized it. So it's not just the Holocaust, it's not just women, but it's even about things that happened during the civil rights movement. So uh, my intention is to do what I've done twice before, and that is to get more votes than Donald Trump did in the last two presidential elections, and that's exactly what I intend to do. Going back through a lot of your interviews and what you say, you, you are hyper-focused on a lot of local issues, especially there in North Carolina. There's something that you've said as well that on day one you'll stand with Texas when you become governor of North Carolina. Immigration is a big issue, especially at the national stage in the presidential race. So when you tell voters in North Carolina that you will stand with Texas on day one, what do you mean by that? What I mean is this is leadership is more than a tweet or what some consultant tells you to say. The next governor of North Carolina is going to have to understand how to protect our state, our way of life from Washington DC's inability to balance their budget, protect our borders and do so many other things. We are a border state, whether we like it or not. And so what I would do, the plan is simply to convene the leaders of the National Guard of North Carolina, which the governor commands, and ask them what our capability is. Ask them how protected our border is and make sure that our law enforcement is fully funded and fully staffed. Number three, work with Governor Abbott and other Southern states to figure out how we can best help them. And let me just say that this is no longer gonna be the State of the Union. It's gonna to have to be states of the Union. It's gonna be the states that bind together who can live within their means to solve these problems. And as a CPA, something that you've never heard any candidate say, that any penny of taxpayer, North Carolina taxpayer money that goes toward doing the job that the federal government's supposed to do, I, as governor of North Carolina, am gonna send them a bill for that expense. That's what it actually means to stand with Texas. Illegal immigration, we can talk about fentanyl, we can talk about human trafficking, but illegal immigration is estimated to cost North Carolina billions of dollars per year. And the federal government is doing nothing about it. My wife, Cynthia, always says to put things in context. Just in the last few years, there's been four Nebraskas. The population of the state of Nebraska times four that have illegally immigrated into North Carolina. And this is something that I will be focused on as the next governor. I think lastly here, we thank you so much for your time, Treasurer. What is something else or two or three other things that voters can know for sure is where you say on day one, you'll stand with Texas. What else can they know that you'll be doing starting day one as governor? Well, it starts um, two months before day one uh, when you put your cabinet together. We're going to put a cabinet together that represents the party that I joined nearly 50 years ago. Conservatism, common sense, courtesy, humility, and ethics. I have been the best treasurer money can't buy. I'll be the best governor money can't buy. And we are going to hit the ground running day one. Not only about the economy, not only about protecting our borders, but also about other important issues like education. We need to let parents be parents. We need to understand that COVID put sunshine on what wasn't happening in many of our schools. And we need to also understand that when you let parents be parents, sometimes that they go into different types of alternatives to meet the needs of their kids. And it's important in a Falwell administration, every single penny of taxpayer money that goes toward any public education that everyone will be held to the same standard. And I will say, in addition to everything else we've talked about, it's time for people to get serious about their vote. This is not something you can do in March, and if you don't like it, you can return it in April. Uh, this is serious as people start to focus on who they're gonna vote for. And I know how precious people's automobiles are to them, so there's only a couple of basic questions they need to ask. Who can they see as their governor? 
who has the competence and the track record of actually saving lives, saving minds, and saving money, and explaining conservatism without offending people. And who would they give their car keys to for four years? The car keys to state government. Who would they give their car keys to for four years and come back and that car not be repossessed and in better working condition than they left it? So I want them to have an opportunity to vote for someone. I'm the first person to announce for governor as a Republican. I'm the first person to file for governor and I'm the first name on the ballot. And people can learn more at dalefallwell.com. That's F-O-L-W-E-L-L. Okay, someone they give their car keys to for four years. So state treasurer, North Carolina Dale Falwell and candidate for governor, thank you so much. Thank you for having me and the, the value that this brings to your viewers.